And to adjust our theme, we'll go up here to the Actions menu, Show Action List, and type in the filter Theme and choose Default 7 Theme Adjuster, which opens up this window. And it's important to know you want to be using Reaper 7.17 or newer, as the Theme Adjuster doesn't come with the older versions. And it really only works with the Reaper 7 default theme. Now, in a previous video, I covered every setting we can make in the theme adjuster. So, this video isn't going to be about that. We're just going to focus on the most important ones that I really think you should know about. But check out that video if you want to dig in deeper. So, before we dig in, just know that at any point, if you mess anything up, you can go down here in the global section to reset all values to their default. And it'll go back to the default before you changed anything. So the first thing I want to talk about is this setting up here. Apply custom color to track labels. By default, this is on. So you can see in our tracks, this is our track color. And the track names get that custom color, as you can see right here. But I kind of feel like it makes it harder to read those names. So I tend to turn the setting off right here. Now they turn white. And we can adjust the brightness or how white they are right over here in the global text brightness. We can make it dimmer or brighter. And notice not only affects the track names, but also down here in the transport, how bright that text is from dim to bright. So I like to adjust that to taste. Then I want to go to the track controls and change the order of the elements in our track controls. These are the elements over here. And notice in the upper right, right now, I'm seeing the routing button. For me, I might prefer that it's the effects button. So what I could do is go over here to the effects button and change the order to switch with the routing button. So now the effects button is over here and the routing button is over here. So we could switch the order of our elements that easily. We want to move the polarity over here or to the right, move our panning to the right or left to put our elements in any order we want. Then down over here, we have the visibility programmer, which decides which elements we see and when, based on the variables up here. If the mixer is visible, track is selected, armed, or always. So by default, these elements are gonna be hidden if the mixer is visible. If we open the mixer, notice some of the elements disappear. The routing button, the pan, and the polarity button. With the concept being, they're going to show up in our mixer, so we don't need them up here. If you want to see them no matter what, just deselect them over here. And now we see those elements if the mixer is shown or hidden. No matter what, we see all these elements. So if you prefer that, change those over here. Then we have this section if our tracks are not armed. We can see by default these elements are hidden if these tracks are not in record. If I put it in record, we now see input monitoring over here, the record mode over here, and the input to this track. And if we take it out of record, those elements are hidden. But if you want to see those at all times, we can just turn these off. And now we see them no matter what. But if you feel like the track control panel is getting too busy, which is the purpose of hiding them to begin with, you can just turn some of them on or off. Like for me, I like to turn off monitoring and the record mode, but just see our record input. So I put it in record. We can now see the monitoring and the record mode, but we always see the input to our tracks. So if you want that, just turn this option off. And then we'll always see the input to our tracks. Now, right down over here, we can adjust the size of our track name. If you don't use very long names on your tracks, we can make that shorter right here, which gives us room if we want to change a volume knob to a fader, which we could do over here. We can make this bigger. Now we get a fader, adjust the track name over here to create that room. Now we have a fader we could adjust like this instead of using a knob. And notice we still kept our fader element over here because we adjusted the label length and the fader size to be the size we need. But if you notice, because of the input length, the polarity button is now in the third row. If we don't want that, 
we could change the size of our input right down here. Make it smaller. Now the polarity button shows up right here in the second row, which is helpful if we change the height of our tracks like this, we'll still see all the elements on our tracks. So it gives us more room based on the height of our tracks. So we can see everything if they're big or small. Then if we go back up here to our labels and values, notice by default, it hides all of them. If we unselect this, we now see the value of our volume and our pan. So if I move my fader, I can see what level I'm moving it to, or my pan to the left or right or the center. We can see that if we turn this option off. But notice it again makes the track pretty crowded. If we don't want that, we can choose this option and it looks the same as before. But now if we select our track, we then see the value of the volume and our pan, but only when the track is selected. Go to this one, this one, and then we see these values. But if we deselect it, it goes back to this because we hit it just when the track is not selected. So if you want to see those values at certain times, we could choose this option and select the track and see them at those times. Then we can go down over here and adjust our meter width. Here's the meters over here. If we want to change the width, we can make them skinnier or fatter to the size we want. I'm going to make them just big enough so I still see my effects button. Then if we go down over here, we have the section assignments. Right now I have some effects on this track. I have a gate, compressor, and EQ. If I want to see them over here on our track individually. We can turn on the effects inserts right here. And that puts these inserts over here where we can choose them individually. So we always see them on the track control panel. We can move it to the left side or the right. And notice the tracks that don't have the effects on them don't line up the same. If you want to change that, we could choose the pinning option right here. Now there's a space for all our effects, no matter what. In fact, I could right click and add effects right from here and see them here, right from this area. And again, we could put them on the left instead or put them on the right. Let's delete these. And notice the color over here matches the color over here and not the color up here. If you want to change that, we could do that right over here with the empty section opacity. If we bring it down, the color is more similar to the track. Or if we bring it up, the color is more similar to this, even if there's no effects on this track. And we can do the same thing with our sends. Let's hide these. Let's put our track sends over here. Let's create some sends from here to here and here to here. We can show our sends. Now they show up over here. And again, we can pin them. So they line up together. We'll put these over here. Now they're on the left side. Show the inserts on this side. Adjust their width. So we can see our sends on this side and the effects on this side if we want. And because they're pinned, all the tracks without sends or effects line up the same way. And their coloring is affected by this setting. Let's hide these for now. And there's one more thing I want to show you. If we reopen the mixer over here, there's one setting I want to show you in the mixer controls. We scroll down right over here. By default, if we move our faders, we don't see the value they're changing to. We don't see this faders value. But if we want to see that, and usually I do, I want to turn on this option. So we can see the fader value right here and the pan value over here, left or right or center. But by default, this is hidden, so you don't see those values. We do see a meter readout, so if you don't want to see that, you can turn it off here or we'll leave it on. But I like to leave this on as well, as it provides more information when I move my fader, which is the same thing we did in our track control panel when we selected our track. 
I move this fader and see the value I'm moving it to or from. And when it's unselected, we don't see those values. And the elements show up the way we left them before. So that's pretty much it. That's the theme adjustments you should know about in Reaper 7. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Mm -hmm.